Hey guys, Luke here again with you and in this video we're going to continue building our mid-length hydrofoil board and we are up to fitting the vent plug and the leash plug. So I thought I'd just give you a quick overview of how we do it and also the materials we'll use and then we'll get straight into it. So we'll, what we'll be doing is fitting a vent plug like this. So what I, I'll just give you a quick look. So it has a screw on the inside that unscrews, has a hole all the way through it. And then right in the middle there, we can sort of see that little gap through there. There's a piece of Gore-Tex sort of up in the bottom of that thread and that allows air in and out, but it doesn't allow water in. And so what we do is we fit this plug into the board, we screw this cap in, and then we never have to remove it. It'll allow that uh, pressure change within the board, but it won't let any water into the blank. So we'll be putting that in the nose, and in the tail, we'll be using this FCS uh, leash plug. This is a standard leash plug that I use for my surfboards or kiteboards, uh, or SUP, and there we go. So in there, we've got the bar for the leash plug, and that's what you'd normally be looking at. Um, so the cover just keeps the resin out while we're installing it. So before we go through how to fit it, I just wanted to give you a couple of other options. This is a handle that has that same thread in the bottom there, if you can see. So it's blocked at the moment, but you can fit this handle in the board and then drill that hole out and then fit that same little screw in and have a handle and a vent all in one. So I'm not installing a handle in this board, but if you wanted to do a handle anyway, this is a great way to do it instead of having to put another vent in, you can do the handle and the vent at the same time. <clears throat> Let's just get into what we are doing today and that is fitting the leash plug and the vent plug. So the way that we do it is we actually use a jig very similar to how we just did the foil tracks. This is a hole that is the right size for what I need. Flush trimmer around on the, on the deck and round we go creating the perfect depth and width for the hole. So I'll just show you exactly how I've set it up and that is <clears throat> for the vent plug. It's a 32 millimeter hole that's for this particular vent plug and this vent plug and the leash plug will both be on the website if you need them. And you can see that this one fits very snug. So I, I haven't left any real tolerance there. Whereas the FCS plug, I have two mil all the way around and that leaves a sort of a little ring of resin that goes all the way around. The reason that I do that is that this one is set in, whereas this one is flush level. And so this allows all this resin to go around here, but we don't actually need much more because um, you know the, the lip can be sort of in line with the fiberglass, whereas this one I like to leave that, that solid ring of resin all the way around the plug itself. Now one more step before we mix up some resin. We're going to fit the vent plug without the vent in it. So pull the vent out and then put the vent aside. And then we need to just put some masking tape to cover this hole so we don't get resin sort of oozing up through into that thread, which would make it really hard to fit afterwards. So just using a little bit of masking tape and a razor blade, just so it looks something like that. So it's covered. So we're not going to have resin coming up into it. What will happen is after we've set this, we actually take a drill and we carefully just drill the hole back through because as we put resin in this hole, it's inevitable that it's going to actually clog the bottom and, and close off any vent potential. So we'll re-drill back through this afterwards and then we can fit the, uh, fit the, the vent itself, but this just keeps the resin from coming up while we fit it. So for the depth of them, we want them to sit slightly proud and then we sand it down flat with the fiberglass. We don't want this to be sunken at all because then we'd have to sand the fiberglass down to, me to meet it. Right? So this sort of sits up just ever so slightly and we'll be sanding a bit off the top. And same with this, it's this surface here that we want slightly above the board. So we're going to sand this whole bump off plus hit this surface as well. Now these leash plugs are designed to sort of have a, a little patch of fiberglass over them and that's what this slightly raised area is similar to how we did the foil track what you can do is put a patch over it it sort of builds up onto this little mound and then you sand the mound off and then you've got fiberglass supporting it all the way around however for this board i don't do that um really i i the, when I want to reinforce a leash plug is mainly for my wave riding kite boards or a sort of 
moderate to big wave surfboard, right? My big waves, which is not very big, but double overhead, triple overheads, that's sort of my maximum. And so then I reinforce the leash plug because it comes under a huge amount of stress, especially kiting when you pull yourself through the back of a wave and the board gets pulled by the wave and the, le the leggy is stretched right out. There's a huge amount of load on these. But this foil board, you're never really under that much load because I'm riding unbroken swells, right? And so I just glass it in. I, I mean, I just resin it in. I don't, I don't lay any glass over the top of it. So, But there are different ways to do it. That's why I'm saying it. So hopefully that was enough general information and then let's get set up. So the next step before we mix up the resin is to mark our position on the board. So for the tail and for the nose, you really can put it wherever you want. You can even put the vent plug also in the tail instead of the nose. These plugs you can pretty much go anywhere. Um, a surfboard would be right towards the tail here, but uh, this foil plug, because we sort of stand so far forward, I'm gonna just bring it around about 150 or 125 millimeters from the tail just to put it sort of in the center aesthetically but you could choose to put it sort of anywhere in this region and so for the nose i'm going to be coming back almost to in front of where the carbon is here around about 500 from the nose again anywhere in this area it's a good idea to have it somewhat centralized so that you're getting sort of even pressure but to be honest I haven't had a problem with these before, so I think this will be just fine. And I'll be doing exactly in the center again. So center of the stringers, 500 mils back from the nose. So just using the leash plug thickness as a gauge, I'm just going to mark with some masking tape around the drill bit. So you just get that started and then just make sure that even the point of this isn't going to go f p past the width of that. Okay, so then we can just drill straight into that hole. Now this is not a fi finished product of course because we're going to route out the larger hole bigger. But we just want to get through that fiberglass. And there you go, you can see it drops in very fast once you, once you get there. So I'll just clear some of that out. And we'll do the same thing at the nose. And now we know that when we put our jig on, like that, the router bit can actually go down and into that hole and sit down onto the jig. So I was just setting up to do the, uh, to set the router depth to cut them in. And I hear this commotion outside and there is a black bear that's just run up the tree there. I guess it is that season. Anyway. Let's keep at it. The bear spray close, and uh, let's hopefully just get back on track here with the uh, with the project. So what I've done is I've just set the router depth, and I've set it to exactly the depth. If we go like this and like that, of the top of the flange there, so you can see that is set to that exact height. And I do that because this way I can actually push the plug all the way down onto the foam and I know it's exactly the right height. Okay, so let's start with this one. So at this stage, you can just dry fit them. So put them in position. Great, they're just slightly proud. Uh, so that will be easily sanded off. And then nice and flush on the top there. And just a, a small ring around it of space for the resin. So the next step right now is to mix up the resin. 
So I'll be mixing up 30 grams of resin, so that's 20 of part A and 10 of part B. And I'm going to add a few scoops of the fiberglass powder to thicken this. So that has made a little bit of a paste, a bit thicker. And now I'll just add a very small amount of white tint, something like that. And that will just give us that nice white color around those rings. Okay. So just putting, uh, pouring a little bit into the bottom of the hole. Because this is so porous, I'm sort of trying to allow for the fact that it's going to fill some of these random cavities that we have, allowing enough resin in there to fill all of these grooves, but not overfilling it. More like that. And then we line up the FCS with the length of the board and we'll just push it down and let it all come out the side still got a fair bit too much in there it's all gets sanded off so it's actually not too critical so we know we can push it down all the way to the bottom but we also want to leave a bead of resin around it because if I see if you can see there where I've just wiped it off that will sink a bit and then all of a sudden we'll have a cavity there tomorrow. So you want to leave it so there's a bit of build up all the way around it. And then what we can do, a bit of tape, just like that, just to hold that in position. Make sure it's not going to float up or anything weird happens after we leave. Clean up most of the excess. All right, let's go to the vent plug. All right, so the vent plug is much the same process. We'll pour a bit of resin in. You can just work it around the walls if you're not filling it like we did in the last one. Just work it into all of the foam. Might need a little bit more because this one does have that recess all the way around it. over the next sort of 10 minutes is come back and just really check these and grab the end of the stick just with a bit of resin and just make sure that there's a build up all the way around the ring so that if I point the camera at the right spot so that as that sort of uh, starts to sink away if there's R cavities that are slowly filling we'll have resin to replace it and make sure that we've got a mound and not a recess because the mound is easily sanded off of course so I'm actually just gonna pull the tape back okay, so I'm back it's the next day and the resin has gone hard around the two plugs so you can see they're nice and hard now and the first step is going to be to sand these flat using the sort of coarse angle grinder just to touch that up so we don't want to burn through the glass around the other areas so you know we don't want to be sanding around here too much and going through this glass while well, really we're just trying to sand this resin off so you're just sort of touching like lightly around this area to try and get that uh, nice and flat we'll also be doing the same thing for the leash plug so just popping out that uh, little cover and we're just going to be sanding this whole thing flat exactly the same way so let's get into it Alright, so finished sanding those. They've come up quite flat. 
that looks good. There is still just a tiny little imperfection there, so I will keep an eye on that for the final sand, but I think I will have to actually add a little bit of resin into that and the leash plug. And so the next step is I like to just take a small piece of sandpaper and just run it around in here just to make sure that we don't have any sharp edges on this corner of that plastic that's going to ultimately slowly wear down on the leash rope. So with the leash rope, it's, you know, particularly with surfboard, it's always like rubbing on there, getting pulled right against that hard edge. So I just like to sand that, that plastic off, but we'll actually do that again after the final sand because we're going to take a little bit more as we final sand. And then with the vent plug, of course, we just need to open back up that hole that we now have resin in there with the masking tape that we put there. So this is just a seven mil drill bit right in the middle there. We don't want to hit that thread and we're not trying to bury a drill bit all the way down through there. We're just trying, you can see the resin that it's taking out there. You can hear it. There we go. Okay, and so that is now accessing down into the foam. Okay, so that is it for this video. We've got the vent plug fitted, we've got the leash plug fitted, uh, and in the next step, we're going to do all of the fine sanding. So that basically we're bringing this board right up to a finished standard in the next video. I thought I'd give you a quick update on the bear from yesterday. It did actually come back down the tree and sort of hung around. It came right up to the front of the sea can. It was Fair bit bigger actually when it was on the ground. It's definitely taller than me. And uh, then it was quite persistent. I wanted to hang around. So I ended up sort of making a lot of noise. Um, and I had to, you know, throw a couple of chunks of wood at it and all sorts of stuff to make it actually move on. But ultimately it did move on, which is good. This time of year, they do tend to sort of come through the property a lot. Uh, but that one was particularly sort of interested in hanging out. So more, more so than I would have liked. But all good in the end. But anyway, like I said, Final step tomorrow is going to be the fine sanding of it. So um, yeah, hopefully this video was helpful and I hope to see you in that one. See you there.